All right, this week's Eye on MPI is from Sincereon. Lady Ada, what is this week's Eye on MPI? That's right. I'm kind of a sucker for, for Sincereon sensors because they're always really good, and I really like sensors. So I want to show you the kind of the newest, most interesting things. And um, this sensor is uh, interesting. It's a, a, a low... Uh, pressure flow meter. Uh, it's kind of intended for medical uses, but I actually think it could be useful for um, a lot of uh, robotic or industrial uses where you want to measure airflow, but you want to be able to handle like low flow rates because a lot of sensors that we've got um, are intended either for water or for high flow rates because they, they, you know, they create some pressure. Um, this one is designed for medical uses such as like a CPAP or a ventilator, um, but even if you're not doing medical grade stuff. I think this, this is an interesting sensor. So this is a, um, this is the SFM, sorry, SFM 3119. Uh, it's a low flow um, air or gas, the non-corrosive uh, air or gas sensor. Um, and it's, you know, meant for non-liquids, meant for gases. It's tuned for either air or oxygen, um, but, you know, you could probably tweak it for and calibrate it for other sensors. Um, What's nice about it is it's low cost, it's really simple, and it's kind of all in one. Um, it's, you know, it's got a, a you know, flow rate uh, range. I can't remember, maybe you can go this so I can actually read the text. Oh yeah? Yes. I can do that. Um, you can go up to uh, 240 SLM, which is uh, liters, uh, standard liters per minute. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's the design of it is a very modular, like a lot of sensors we've seen that are for this are kind of designed for like one customer. Um, this is kind of designed for, you know, anybody to use as long as you can just uh, connect to either side. Um, it's small, it's plastic. Um, there's an inlet and outlet. It's monodirectional. So gas is only supposed to go uh, one way, but it looks like it can handle some negative uh, flow measurements, um, perhaps not precisely. Um, there's O-rings on either side. You can see uh, the directional knob and there's a little module on top. It's quite small. It's only, you know, maybe two inches by one inches by two inches or so. Um, and this is what our liquid uh, flow rate sensors are like. This is a kind of a low cost turbine sensor. And so you can see that there's a little uh, turbine in it. But um, if we go to the overhead real fast, I can show that this sensor doesn't have a turbine. I actually don't know how it works. I, I didn't do a ton of research. I didn't want to take this apart because I had this working, but it could be, you know, some sort of capacitive um, sensor or something. I don't know, it's a little bit mysterious, but you can see there's no turbines. So, um, you know, the gas or air flows through um, mm. without any, anything impeding it, which can be very good for low flow rates. Um, another thing that I really like about this is um, a lot of flow rate sensors use you know, a Hall effect sensor on the turbine or something and you have to count and it's, you have to calibrate and it's not quite linear. Um, whereas this sensor, you know, has a standard I2C um, interface. Uh, you just power it with three to five volts. Uh, you get clock data ground. It's on a two millimeter pitch connector. It's a standard connector. Um, I just used a two millimeter pitch wire connector that I had handy uh, and plugged it in to get it working. Um, and it just works and you can query it and get data and it's all ready to go. It's all pre-formatted um, temperature and uh, flow rate data. Um, there's also like checksums, which I always like, uh, you know, means that the data you're reading, you can verify, especially for, you know, if you are using this for medical uses or important uses, like making sure that there's enough oxygen or, or airflow in an area. Um, it's good to make sure that the data you're getting is um, verified. So um, having a checksum is handy. But uh, the good news is you don't have to do any of the coding yourself because um, they've actually released uh, libraries. This is just one library, this is the Arduino library, but they have a Python library. Um, they've got embedded C library. I think they have one for a couple different, they have like four or five different libraries um, in different languages that are ready to go um, with an example code that you can read uh, temperature and flow rate. So actually I was able to um, wire up the sensor and have this demo. I got it up and running in like less than 25 minutes. Um, you know, could be easily integrated almost immediately. So that, I always like that because I feel like you get a sensor and especially low cost ones that are not calibrated, you don't trust them. Like you have to do a lot of setup. You have to test them in all these situations. Um, I like that this one just gives you digital data. You don't have to do any um, linearization or um, modeling of the sensor at all. 
Um, there's lots of documents. There's step files for you know the 3D model. There's handling information. There's you know different calibration details of how they calibrated it for oxygen uh, versus air, or a mix, I think, of oxygen and air. Um, but you know, pretty much, it was just like really, really fast to get going. So I can, I can show a demo real fast, and then we can um, yeah, show a demo. Tester. So, so this is the sensor. So I just, I really just, I just had two millimeter pitch connector, and I wired it up. Uh, you see that there's a little filter here to keep uh, dirt and dust out, but it's a very fine filter, so it's not, um, it's not in the way. And then this arrow shows you which way airflow goes. So right now, there's no airflow. You're just uh, reading the temperature. It's a little warm here under the lights, but if I blow into the sensor. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the flow sensor. You know, I don't, I don't have an O-ring. I'm not putting my mouth on it because that would be kind of gross. Um, but just uh, blowing through the sensor, it detects my um, air coming out of my, my mouth and it uh, responds very quickly. Um, it does have a, you know, a low pass uh, filter built in that you can, I think it's enabled by default, but you can disable it. But it's probably a good idea because I think airflow especially can be very buffety. Um, and you want to have, you know, a couple readings in a row that are averaged out. Uh, and it does that for you as well. Available on DigiKey. Shortly. Sort of. uh, so when I, I, I purchased it and it was in stock, and then um, as I was writing on MPI, uh, I looked back and it sold out. However, they're going to get another shipment. It's rare. Usually they don't sell out, but um, this is a pretty cool sensor. Uh, very handy. And the price is quite good um, for a sensor of this grade and usability, only like about 120 bucks. So it'll be in stock in about two months. Also, uh, contact you if you need them immediately, and they can hook you up with samples uh, from Sensiria. And it's usually... This is an unusual situation, but and, um, high demand. You know, there's there's videos that a lot of sensor makers have, um, and some of them are okay. Uh, I like this one a lot, so uh, that 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 intro from the show will all make sense now. Um, I will say that this video is for the SFM series. They talk about other sensors that are in the family, not just this one. So yeah. the, it'll, it'll look a little different, um, but it's about how these sensors in general work. So it's yeah. still a very good video to they, get an idea of what it does. They do a good job. So we're going to play the whole thing. It's, and there's a teddy bear. It's about two and a half minutes. The teddy bear lives. Hi, and welcome to the Sensorion Flow Sensor video series. I'm Grisha, a contact partner for our valued medical customers. This video in our flow sensor series is all about proximal flow measurements. I'll go through a few of the challenges in this field and show you our sensor solutions. Proximal flow measurements have the big advantage that they are unaffected by leaks in the tubing system. Sensor readings offer direct feedback on how much air the patient is inhaling and exhaling, which is very useful. Even so, harsh operating conditions can put accuracy and reliability at risk. Changing temperature and humidity levels are common, especially in an emergency and transport setting. In addition to that, proximal flow sensors are in contact with pathogens exhaled by the patient. Thankfully, there is an answer to these challenges. The Sensirion SFM 3300 and 3400 series. The flow sensors are designed for use with adults and infants alike and are available in two versions, reusable and disposable. The former can complete up to 30 autoclaving cycles, while the latter offers the same measurement performance at a lower cost. For ease of use among medical personnel, we have fitted all of our proximal flow sensors with grooves for a clip-on connector cap. Connecting them to breathing circuits with their standard medical cones is easy too. Want your proximal flow meter to be heated to prevent rain out in humid environments? No problem. We've made sure to equip them with a small heater. The digital sensor output is factory calibrated and compensated for temperature variations. If you want to perform first tests, look no further than our evaluation cable which you can order from our distribution partners. And to visualize and log data recorded by the sensor, we provide free readout software. Our website and info line are waiting for you. Thanks for your interest in our flow sensors. See you again in the next Sensirion video. And uh, this is my homage to Teddy. This is the teddy bear. So that's this week's Ion MPI. Oh
on NPR.